record this lecture. So, and uh, your face will not come up uh, in, uh, you, your face will not be recorded. Uh, only my face will uh, record it. Okay, uh, so let's start again. Uh, introduction, the purpose of this lecture is to understand the relationship between legal institutions and economic development and to review the theory of, on the causal relationship between good legal institution and development. Among all, the role of the property rights. There are many good legal institutions, but I focus to the role of the property rights and to examine the political nature of legal institutions and uh, to discuss whether legal institutional reform can contribute for an inclusive society. Uh, about the law and development theory, since old age, the law and the society have been central in the philosophy, political science, and even economics. So maybe you know that Aristotle, Aristotle the Hegel, Max Weber, Montesquieu, Karl Marx, Adam Smith, all of them talking about the law, law and economics. So, but uh, their focus is different. And uh, some theories just implicitly assume the role and significance of the law as a given promise. And others insisted the law is primary determinant of the social progress. The law and development itself is a new, uh, how to say, it, a new uh, academic field especially after the, second, after the Second World War. The economic development of newly independent, uh, after the Second World War, the economic development of newly independent developing countries became an international concern. Before that, the economic development of the colony, colonial society is a matter of the domestic politics of each ruling state, but after the, former colony became the independent state. So their development became the international concern. That's why the how to say, international assistance for the development became necessary. And uh, those uh, development assistance uh, was implemented uh, based on the development paradigm. Development paradigm means that the dominant strategy for development and the development paradigm has changed time to time. And the less recent development paradigm is combination of the new classic economy and the new institutionalist school. The history of the change, history of the, the development paradigm, you can read the uh, reading materials I already distribute to you through the TJ teaching assistant. Okay, now uh, I'd like to briefly explain the new classic economy and new institutional school. The new eco classic economy emphasizes the price determination mechanism in market. And the new institutional school emphasizes the role of institutions that constrain human behavior in economy. So maybe you wonder what, is, what institution mean that the, here that the institution is kind of the rules, norms, and uh, also that another restrictions to limit your choice of the behavior. For example, if you uh, drive car on the road, you have to go the uh, left side in Japan. You cannot go the right side because there is a, a transportation law which uh, regulates the uh, driving lane for the uh, car drivers. So you, your choice is limited, not free. But because uh, your choice is limited, you can drive the car on the public road. Without such institution, you cannot drive because you cannot predict that uh, uh, other car go which lane. So this is the uh, uh, role of the institution. Okay. The, I, I just mentioned about the uh, traffic uh, transportation law, the legal system is one of and the most important institutions. Empirical studies show a significant correlation between the rule of law and the GDP per person as figured below. This is uh, based on the uh, empirical research, quantitative research done by the World Bank Group. 
is a very in, uh, famous graph, which shows a rule of law index, rule of law index based on the uh, how to say, aggregated uh, data from about uh, some sub indexes about the rule of law, such as uh, 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 how to say the uh, uh, applicability of law, the uh, uh, corruption, or the credibility of the court, and the uh, has the legal enforcement and the uh, uh, quality of the bureaucracy, blah, blah, blah. So, and uh, this um, graph uh, clearly shows the uh, significant correlation between the uh, rule of law indexes and the uh, GDP per capita. But the causal relationship remains unsolved. So correlation, as you know, that the correlation is not the correlation, uh, causal relations. Maybe from this graph, you can uh, think whether the rule of law results in economic growth or country can put a cost or could put a money on the good legal system because it is rich. It depends. So this is uh, maybe the, this causal relationship is uh, sh should be uh, how to say it, elaborated. The both uh, theoretical frameworks and empirical studies are necessary to know further about the causal relationship between law and development. And uh, be, due to the time limitations, and uh, yeah, this uh, lecture is more focused on the introduction. Um, I will focus on the, only the theoretical framework. We try to explain the causal relationship especially that the good law result in the, uh, a good economy. The following, following sections, uh, in the following sections, I discuss first, at first market mechanism and transaction cost. It's like uh, economy, but uh, I don't use uh, any formula or mathematics, just show the figures. And the uh, transaction cost and the law, third, political aspect of the legal institution, and fourth, an inclusive institution building or the access to justice. Okay, I will go move to the second part, the market and the transaction cost. Transaction cost is a key to understand the relationship between the law and development. At first, I'd like to explain about the market. Maybe for the student from the economic program, uh, you, it's uh, almost the be most basic uh, knowledge, but uh, please uh, be, uh, be patient uh, to hear my explanation about the market. So first, I would, I'd like to start from the perfect market mechanism. So this shows, uh, uh, oh, sorry. this, uh, shows our, our perfect market mechanism. As a well-known demand and supply curve, this is this is the uh, well-known demand supply curve indicates the quantity of the production uh, represented by Q and the price P of the particular product is determined by the demand and the supply. So there is a demand and the supply. Maybe you have ever learned about the, this uh, model. And according to the new classic economy, a scarce commodity can be allocated optimally by the relative prices of two products in the market. Optimal allocation means that allocating a commodity to maximize utility. Utility means that the people's happiness or the economic value of the uh, one good. But uh, I will explain the more concrete example. That uh, let's suppose a bread and wisen. Is there a student from the Germany or the Belgium that the wisen is a very famous uh, white beer? It's brewed from the wheat. So that the bread, both bread and the wheat, product produced from the wheat. You know, so a figure below uh, explains how a market of the bread and the wisen, uh, white white beer, determines the optimal allocation of the wheat. So, 
because there is uh, only limited amount of the wheat, and uh, this wheat can be used for the uh, bread production and uh, uh, beer production. So, but uh, you have to decide that uh, how many tons of wheat should be used for the bread production and how many tons the rest of the wheat uh, should be uh, consumed for the beer production in order to uh, maximize the uh, people's utility, people's benefit. So, and according to the classic economy, market can decide it. So, when in the market, a price of bread is higher, so higher is the comp higher, comp compare higher, uh, how to say, higher compared to the beer price. This is a relative uh, price, not the absolute price, but the, so if there is a two uh, products and uh, one product, the price of one product is relatively higher than others. So this is, a, I call the relative price. So if the price of bread is higher than the white beer price, bread producers, uh, partial, uh, no, I hope that, uh, brangeri, <laughs> uh, may buy more feet, wheat for bread production. When the white beer price is higher than the beer, uh, bread price, breweries may buy more wheat. Thus, the market can determine the best allocation of wheat between the bread production and white beer production based on the different relative price of the, between the two goods. This model, this is a model of the perfect market. So, the price of the beer and bread automatically determined by the demand and the supply. And uh, this price that uh, this uh, determines uh, relative price automatically determine the allocation of scarce commodity in order to maximize the people's benefit. So, and uh, according to the classic economy, and the classic economy, this mechanism almost automatically uh, implemented so if there is a perfect market, but what is a perfect market? So, and how we can realize a perfect market? Uh, Todaro, and, Todaro and Smith, that uh, they are uh, they're very famous uh, economic, uh, development economist textbook, uh, they explained as follows, the traditional neoclassic economics deals with an advanced capitalist world of the perfect markets. Consumer sovereignty, automatic pro price adjustment, automatic price adjustment based on the uh, demand and supply, and decisions made based on the marginal private profit. So people can uh, decide how many they want to buy, buy beer or they want to buy bread automatically they can know from the, uh, their uh, will and from the uh, quality of the bread. So this is automatically uh, they know. And the, pri and, uh, and the utility, cal utility calculations, the people automatically and perfectly calculate that the, which the bread or beer uh, is more beneficial for me. So, and the uh, equilibrium, outcomes in old product and uh, resource market. This is a perfect, uh, perfect market. It uh, theoretically exists, but in reality, there are no uh, market. So, because uh, uh, you easily understand that uh, you cannot compare the, all the price at the same time, at, at once. If you want to know the price of the vegetable, for example, onion. So in the market, maybe you can, you have to go to the old supermarket in Nagoya or the, in the world. And then you decide whether the market, the price in, of the onion in the market is an optimal one or not. It's impo uh, impossible. So you cannot compare the, all the information at the time. And you can know the quality of the onion as well. Maybe that the buyer or the farmer know the quality of the uh, onion and uh, they know that the whether the price of onion match with fit to the, uh, how to say, match with the uh, uh, price, quality and the price is uh, fitting, 
but you, you cannot know about that because you are not the expert of the onion. The same thing happened to the car, land, computer, everything. So this is a limitation of the human, humankind. Because human, the, uh, how to say, uh, capacity of the humankind is limited, the people cannot, uh, how to say, uh, realize the uh, perfect market. And actually, the many constraints exist in the real market. The transaction cost is a significant one of the market constraints. So about the uh, market theory, you can learn from the textbook. But today, I just focus about the uh, transaction cost as a one of the uh, uh, restriction uh, for the perfect market. The Ronaldo Coase is a very famous uh, economist, uh, explains the optimal resource allocation is realized only under the clearly defined property rights and the no transaction cost. This uh, explanation co uh, called the Coase theorem is uh, one of the, uh, I say the most basic uh, theory about the market, uh, the economy. So that's externality don't lead to the misallocation of resources provided that there are no transaction cost and property rights are clearly defined. And now what is the transaction cost? Yeah. So as a transaction cost are costs needed to in initiate, implement, monitor or complete a transaction cost. And the transaction costs include the material cost, time cost, or opportunity cost, as well as, as, well as the psychological cost. So various factors are affected to the amount of the trans transaction cost. For example, the physical factors, you see. So geographic distance. If you have to do the transaction with the uh, counterpart who are remote from you, it costs much. Cost is for transportation or the psychological uh, distance. Maybe you, uh, how to say, the prefer to make the transaction with a close neighbor rather than with a very remote people. So this is a, a, a geographic distance and the psychological geographic distance. And the load condition, if there is a very bad load that you cannot make the transaction with others you cannot uh, carry the goods to the remote area. And the communication infrastructure, to communicate or to negotiate that if there are no communication infrastructure, you cannot, you have to pay more cost to make the transaction. And cultural factors also important, such as the religion, language, mode of conduct. So maybe if we do the uh, transaction with uh, foreigners, we always feel the uh, cultural gap. This is a cultural gap made the different mode of conduct. Maybe in Japan, for Japanese, we don't have to explain the many things, a lot of things. When I, but the, in the if I have to transaction uh, make the trade with the uh, foreigners, I have to explain the, a lot of things to explain the Japanese custom, Japanese uh, people's uh, feeling or something. So this is also the uh, effect to the transaction cost. Maybe finally, uh, to say, uh, I feel, uh, oh, uh, rather than make a transaction with the foreigners, I prefer to the uh, Japanese, uh, make a transaction with Japanese. And institutional factors also important. And this is the key for this class. Enforceability of law and the quality of bureaucracy and quality of government, those are, uh, uh, how to affect those institutional factors affect to the uh, transaction cost. And the legal regulation, judicial body, and the regulatory authority uh, uh, have a significant impact on the transaction cost. As course, uh, course theorem uh, mentions, the law of property rights also very important for the transaction cost. Among the, uh, a lot of uh, legal institution or institutional factors, today I'd like to focus to the property rights. 
because the property right is the most important factor for the market economy. If I want to sell the goods on the, in the market, I have to have the property rights over these goods. I cannot sell the goods if I don't have the property right over that. So that's why that the property right is the most important for the market. Now, uh, transaction costs and price and the market. I will uh, explain about the effect of the transaction cost to the uh, cost uh, price in the market. Transaction cost compose either visible and or invisible parts of the price of goods. Transaction costs are especially important if one should render a long-term large-scale transaction with unfamiliar counterpart. And actually, this is the typical model of the transaction today. So you can imagine that you can make a, tra a trade with in the Amazon or the Mercari or uh, I, said, I forgot the uh, uh, market sites in the US, uh, uh, I said, uh, eBay or something. So this is a very popular. And uh, Douglas North, uh, he also is a very impo uh, important economist in the law and development. Douglas North categorizes the transaction cost to two. Uh, namely measurement cost and the enforcement cost. Uh, cost for uh, enforcement includes the to cost to get the information on the goods and the counterparts, and uh, cost to measure our beneficial attributes of the object of the transaction. And the cost for enforcement is cost to protect your rights and the cost to settle the dispute if it happens and the cost to ensure other parties implement, uh, other party implement contract accordingly. This is a monitoring cost. So the, uh, the following figures explain how the transaction, part, uh, transaction party calculate the transaction cost. So suppose to make a car sales, big car sales, car deal, con car sales contract in a long term base. First, uh, about the uh, cost for measurement of the credibility. So suppose you want to sell the, the 100 units of car to the unfamiliar person. I want to sell the 100 units of car to the company X for 10 years loan. But I'm not sure company X will pay the fee accordingly. So I need to know the X credibility. I must hire a person to investigate X asset and the payment capacity. So I must add the investigation cost to the car price. So investigation cost is right here. So this cost is the added on the uh, real car price. And the uh, second case two is the transaction cost for measurement of the security. I want to sell the 100 units of a car to company X for 10 years loan. X offers a plot of land plot of his land as a collateral for the loan. But I'm worried if a third party already have a mortgage on the same land. So if the third party already, how to say that, put the mortgage in the same land, even though you get the mortgage right over the, on the same land, that the, your uh, loan credit is not secure because uh, you don't have the priority to, pay, to be paid back. So if so, I cannot receive a payment in case of X bankruptcy during the loan period. So I must add the ex extra interest rate on the, of the loan to X to hedge this risk. So this is also that the, another transaction cost. Okay. And the third case, transaction cost for enforcement. I want to sell the 100 units of a car to company X for 10 years loan. If X complains the quality of cars and the reject to pay, I must have a lengthy negotiation with X and visit X's place repeatedly. I may ask the help of powerful persons to take money from, the, by my, from X by myself. In this case, I must pay uh, rewards for them. Even worse. I may, not, I may not able to have payment after all those efforts. 
So I should add this estimated cost of loss to the price. So you also have to add the another cost. As a result, so when you offering the price to the, your counterpart, you calculate those things and you put the, those costs as a hidden price in the uh, car price. So this is a, a transaction cost. If there are transaction costs, the price offered in the market is total of the actual price of the goods and the transaction cost, as you see the fig from figures. In the demand supply curve, we can explain it as the following figure. So, X, uh, Q star is the quality of trade go traded goods. He, uh, in this case, 100 car units, and uh, determined by the nominal price of the goods, uh, 100 units. So, this is a P, nominal price. Please note, but this nominal price includes the transaction cost transaction cost and the actual price of the car. So actual price of the 100 car units is smaller than P star. So this is important. So, and uh, now we are, you should think about the, how to reduce the transaction cost. And uh, if the positive impact on the economic output output if the transaction cost is smaller. In the real world, uh, zero transaction cost is impossible. However, transaction cost in some countries is cheaper than in other countries. So, and uh, for example, in Japan, that if you order to the Amazon, that uh, uh, postal, postal price, uh, how to say, the uh, postal fee and the membership for the Amazon premium is cheaper than United States. So why this happened? In the real, uh, North explained that transaction cost largely depends on the institutions. And if a country has a good institutions, its economic performance better than others. The following figures illustrate how the supplier can reduce the transaction costs if good institutions are available. So about the, uh, uh, about the measuring cost. Mandate, if there is a mandatory disclosures of the financial report, in many countries, the, how to say, especially that the public, uh, uh, public offered company, the uh, a company called Limited, have the oblig obligation to publish the, their financial report every year. So I want to sell uh, 100 units of a car to company X for 10 years loan, but I'm not sure companies X will pay the fee accordingly. This is the same question, but I can access to the X mandatory disclosed financial report easily because it's uploaded to the website. So I can get the information on the X asset and the payment capacity with ignorable cost. So maybe the cost, maybe cost is exist, but it's almost ignorable. And uh, the uh, effect of the credible brand registration system uh, to the uh, cost for measurement. Same, that uh, I want to sell the 100 units of car to the company X for 10 years loan. X offers a plot of land as a collateral for the loan, but I'm worried if a third party already have a mortgage on the same land. But uh, here, by checking the land register book in the land office, I can confirm I'm the sole mortgage. No one put a mortgage other than me. So even in case of X default bankruptcy, X cap payment for me is safe. The fee to see the register book is very cheap, also very cheap. Maybe in Japan, maybe 1,000 yen is enough to get the information. And the credit, credible judiciary is also important to reduce the cost of enforcement. I want to sell the 100 units of car to the company X for 10 years loan. X offers a plot of land as a collateral for the loan. If X complains the quality of the cards and reject it to pay, I must bring the case to the court. The court is professional and neutral. I expect the court settle the case within the reasonable time. 
I should hire a good lawyer. Only I, you sh I should hire a good lawyer to win the case. So if the court admits my claim, I can enforce the judgment in the accordance with the procedure at the prescribed cost. So you can calculate the cost. And you don't have to rely on the powerful person, and you don't have to worry about the unlimited reward for those powerful person. So those cost is also the calculable and small. So if the rights are a good institution, legal institution for the measurement and the enforcement, you can reduce the uh, transaction cost. So now, what is the effect of the transaction cost to the uh, market? This figure uh, indicates the effect of the transaction cost uh, cost reduction. So maybe if supply side can uh, reduce the transaction cost significantly, the supply curve moves towards the downward. So that the supply curve S move downward to the downward. So you that the so that the transaction cost is also very small now. And then if the demand size pro, uh, propensity, that uh, how to say, uh, tendency of, to consume of the demand, is, demand side is consistent, not changing, the market will have the new price, P dash, here. It's because equilibrium is uh, here, new equilibrium, equilibrium point is here. So there is a new price P dash and uh, the new quantity of the Q dash. So, and as a result, production grows because that the Q dash is bigger than Q star. So this is a, a growth in cut rate. So if the uh, transaction cost is uh, reduced, its effect have to have the positive uh, effect to the uh, car market, car sales market. And uh, so what institutions, next point is that what formal institution which reduce the transaction cost? North, Douglas North defined the transaction cost as below's. Institutions are the, uh, are the rules of the game of society, or more formally, the humanly devised constraints that structure the human, human interactions. Maybe the game of society, rule of the games of society, so, um, it's uh, you, a bit difficult to imagine. But uh, for example, uh, suppose the football, soccer. So, there is a restriction uh, to the soccer player. You cannot use a hand. If you can use a ha hand in soccer play, soccer game, maybe you can play, how to say, more freely. But uh, because there is a restriction that you cannot use a hand, this is a game of a rule of games in the soccer play. So, but uh, within this uh, restriction, all soccer players. Uh, make their best effort to maximize the possibility to win. The law is like that. Law puts a restriction on the human behavior in the market or the school or the company or et cetera, or the driving uh, in the public, public road. And every uh, player uh, try to maximize their benefit within this restriction rules. So, so the uh, Douglas North uh, say that uh, this restriction as a uh, game uh, rule of the games in a society, and uh, so and uh, this uh, game institution is humanly devised, not naturally devised. Of course, there is a naturally devised restriction such as the climate, soil, or geographic position. So, but uh, this is a humanly devised constraint that structures human interactions. They are composed of the formal rules, such as the statute law, it's a law itself, or common law in case of the UK, United States, Malaysia, or India, those common law countries, and the regulations. And in, informal constraints, such as a convention, convention is a custom or a 
uh, practices or norms of the behavior. Self norms of behavior is that, like how to say, you have to be polite for the elder person in Japan, or you have to use the polite words for the professor in our university. This is a, a, a norms of behavior. It's not the formal one, but uh, usually people uh, follow this uh, restriction. And the self-imposed cause of the conduct, such as uh, I have to good, do, do the good thing for the others, I have to think I have to support the elder people, or I have to, I, I must not eat during the uh, fasting uh, month, Ramadan month. So this is a self-imposing uh, restriction. It's also affect to the uh, people's behavior. And the enforcement characteristic of both, how extent those constraints are enforce enforceable to me. So, and uh, this lecture focuses only on the formal institutions, formal rules and the formal enforcement system, such as a law, regulation, government regulation, and the enforcement system, such as a court, police, prosecutor. And I never intended that the informal institutions are not necessary. It's definitely opposite. The informal institution is very important, but I don't have to have the time to talk about this point. Uh, no, Douglas North emphasized the critical importance of the rule of rules on the property rights and the protection of the contract as key, inf key formal institutions for economic performance. A cr clearly defined property rights can reduce the cost for, the, for measurement on the goods and the counterparts. As the uh, figures above indicated, that you have to know the quality of cards or quality of your counterparts. So, and the protection of contract is a bundle of the legal and the judicial institutions to reduce the enf enforcement cost, such as a good court, good police, and a good uh, security system. So uh, today, due to the time restriction, this lecture only focuses on the property rights. If you're interested about the other aspect of the insti uh, legal, uh, formal institution, both formal institution and the informal institution that you don't hesitate to ask me. I will recommend some books and the materials about that, both the, uh, uh, either in Japanese and uh, English. The, so now I'd like to uh, discuss about the property rights. Yeah. The land is the most important property for the economy and human, human livelihood. I hope you ag uh, agree with my explanation. Maybe it's very important. Having property rights can be broken down to, uh, to two meanings. Down to the, sorry. Two meanings. Maybe you don't, you never think about what is the uh, uh, meaning of the having the property, land property, but uh, there is a two different aspect. One is uh, to have the bundle of sub rights. For example, right to sell, right to dispose this land, right to use this land, right to rent this land to other person, or even right to leave the land unused. You just, how to say, remain this land unused. So this is the first is uh, having the property, land property right meaning that you have the bundle of the sub rights. And at the same time, that having the land means that you have the useful attributes of the object lands, such as the size, large land or small land, or quality, it's a, a rich soil, fertile soil, or the poor soil, or profitability. If I rent this land, you can get the good rent every month or the very poor rent, small rent. So, and the contentment. So it's a, how to say, a feeling uh, satisfying yourself. Maybe if you have the house in the outside of Nagoya, your contentment is lower if, uh, than if you have the land in the inside the cent uh, at the center of the Nagoya. I don't know very well about the, uh, how to say, the status of the area in Nagoya, which area in Nagoya is the most prestigious place, such as the Gokito area or uh, Higashiko area. 
But in Tokyo, for example, if you have the land in the Shirogane, Shirogane area, that you have the more contentment than you have the uh, land in the Funabashi city outside of the uh, Tokyo. I come from the, my hometown is the Funabashi city in Chiba prefecture, but the land is not so, uh, uh, how to say, the prestigious compared to the Tokyo. This is a contentment and the resale value, etc. So, and please note that the, the bundle of sub rights is defined by the law, and each country have different set of the sub rights. For example, in Japan, even you can uh, you have the right to leave the land unused. So, but uh, my student from the um, Uzbekistan told me that in Uzbekistan, if uh, owner of the land uh, leaves uh, one land uh, unused uh, more than five years, the government will deprive the right. So, this is, this means that uh, uh, in Uzbekistan, that the, having the land means that the uh, the owner have the obligation to utilize this land in the productive way. But in Japan, there are no such a legal uh, restriction. So, and maybe in other countries, uh, even in Japan, that uh, there is a restriction which, uh, how to say, uh, restricts the uh, rights. And the uh, useful attributes that the owner produce the wealth by utilizing the, these useful attributes. So you can uh, cultivate, do the agriculture in this land, or you can do the, you have, uh, how to say, the, uh, uh, build the factory in the strategic place, or you can uh, rent the, this land for, uh, uh, build the apartment at this house in the city area, urban area. So by utilizing the uh, uh, useful attribute, you can produce the wealth. The, and the former aspect that uh, this aspect affects to the uh, profitability of the latter aspect. For example, the strict urban planning regulation, which limits the building heights, uh, may decrease the commercial utility of the land, even if the land locates in the densely populated area. So if you buy the land, you have to check the city planning regulation. Otherwise, you cannot use this land for as you want. And uh, legal restrictions on the conversion of the farmland to other purposes may decrease the in industrial utility of the land, even if it is close to the international trade port. So, so long time in Japan that the uh, uh, farmland cannot be combust, uh, how to say, converted to the uh, industrial purpose. So it's a re restricted. It's due to the uh, Japanese history and the Japanese policy to, uh, how to say, uh, foster the uh, land, uh, how to say, the uh, independent farmer after the World War II. And uh, see, if the land has already been pledged as a collateral mortgage, the economic utility of the land is low for the bank. Because bank already know that the bank has has a second priority in the mortgage rights from the land, so that uh, maybe you cannot uh, borrow the much money from the bank if the, your land already mortgaged by uh, others. And uh, oh, oh, oh. Um, the cognition of the land property rights and its proper registration can reduce the cost for accessing the information on the legal status and the useful attributes of the land and protect the security of ownership and identify owner's responsibility on its property. So owing, uh, having the land rights is not only having the benefit, but also you have to be responsible to that land. So if uh, if the, uh, anyone have the damage due to the uh, problem of this land, you have the responsibility to, com to compensate. Recently that uh, you have ever heard that uh, there is a, a landslide in the one apartment in Yokohama. So 
and uh, uh, high school students uh, died dead because of this land landslide. The owner of the apartment uh, responsible to to pay compensation for the this uh, how the victims. So that the uh, having the property that it's both the having the benefit and the responsibility. And Hernando de Soto, this is a third important uh, economist of the law and development. Hernando de Soto lists the effect of the clear formal recognition and registration of the land property rights as follows. First, the land, land rights and the registration can fix the economic potential of asset. So you can know that uh, from the registration, you can know that how large this land is, how rich this land is, how profitable this land is. So those potential is uh, you can get. And by data, how to recognizing that this property, so this potential is fixed. And integrating the dispersed information into one system, it uh, can reduce the measurement cost. So not only the size of the land, that uh, there is a location of the land, and also that the relevant uh, constraint over this land. This land can be used for the commercial purpose or only for the resident purpose. Or this land can be uh, converted to the industrial place or not. So those uh, related information can be integrated to the one registration and making people accountable. So people are accountable to their own property. If the, everyone owns the same one land, maybe no one cares about this. People only use and don't care about the maintenance. But if the property uh, belongs to the one person, this person will responsibility responsible to the uh, property. And making assets fungible. This is a capitalization I will explain later. And the networking the people, safe transaction network, by uh, defining the clear uh, registration that the people can follow the, how to say, it, a history of the transaction. So, and uh, this history of transaction can network the people. So this is a, a networking and uh, protecting the transaction because uh, there is a, a clear uh, registration. You can claim the property rights over the land against the third party as a person. So those are the effect, uh, positive effect of the land registration and the land uh, formal recognition of the land property, according to the De, De Soto. And why De Soto is uh, important and influential? Because De Soto uh, uh, proposed the theory about the property rights and the economic development. De Soto insisted that, insisted that the people, especially the poor, in the developing country can capitalize their assets through the formal recognition of the land property rights. Maybe uh, a typical legal institution which enables the capitalization of land is a mortgage system. Uh, so capitalization means that how to say, you can utilize this land to produce more wealth than original price. This is the capitalization. For example, that the capital means if you have the capital, uh, you can establish the company and you can produce more product and you can earn the more wealth. This is a capitalization. So, and uh, De Soto insisted if the uh, land is properly uh, re uh, recognized and uh, registered, that the land can be capitalized in order to additional wealth in order to produce the additional wealth. So, and I will explain about the mortgage. I hope that you understand what is a mortgage, but uh, I, I just explain uh, briefly. If there is a mortgage system, the creditor can reserve a right on the land as a security for the debt. For example, you uh, borrow the money from the bank, you offer your land as a collateral. And if you cannot pay back this, you are, uh, that uh, bank will take the, this land as a collateral. This is a mortgage system. In Japan, Teitoken or Tampoken like that. So, and so, and for the uh, 
bank uh, run use using the land as a capitalization goods because the land uh, how to say uh, bank didn't uh, will not uh, bank bank doesn't cultivate this land or bank will not build the factory on this land but the bank just keep the, their right as a collateral this is a cap, one of the uh, model of the capitalization and the data uh, can use the land of its own but mortgage for the production so using land as a production goods so by this way that this land same land can be used uh, multiply. It can be used for the mortgage to borrow the money and it can be used for the production. So while you are borrowing the money from the bank by offering the land as a collateral, but you can continue the production in this land. This is a mortgage system and you can uh, have the more benefit, get the more benefit from the land if there is a mortgage system. But for the mortgage system, the credible registration of the land property right is indispensable for the indispensable. So image, uh, guess, if there is a reliable registration, credit, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I have to check the mic. If uh, there is a uh, reliable registration, creditors, right is securely recorded and represented in the registration or cadastral book cadastral book the creditor doesn't have to monitor and occupy the land physically because uh, the, the uh, creditor's right already secured securely recorded and recognized in the registration book so maybe you don't have to occupy grab the, this land and this means that you can allow the data to use this land. But if credible registration is lacking, what happens? The creditor should physically control the land and maybe remove the data from the land until the debt is paid back. Because there are no registration that you always afraid about so someone take over this land because there are no how to say evidence that you have the right that you have the mortgage right over this land. So maybe you have to control the this land, occupy this land physically, and uh, remove, exclude the owner from this land. The data cannot use the land to produce. So if they can, the if the far, the uh, data is a farmer, they cannot cultivate. Uh, the farm uh, data. Is uh, uh, have the factory, they cannot use this factory to produce. So maybe land can be used only for the uh, mortgage or only for the production. There are no multiple use. So maybe you can uh, compare with a pawn shop. Pawn shop, you know that the pawn shop, if you want to borrow the money, for example, if you have the laptop computer and you need the money, you bring the, this laptop to the pawn shop, Shichiya-san. In Japanese, shichiya, and uh, de uh, deposit your laptop to the pawn shop, and you can borrow the money. And if only if you return the money, you can take back the laptop during the before you pay back the uh, your debt. You cannot use the laptop. So because uh, there are no registration system over the laptop, that's why you cannot. Uh, use a uh, 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 laptop computer as a capitalization goods and as a uh, production goods. You have to choose one of these. So for realizing the uh, mortgage system, follow, uh, following proper legal institution is necessary. First, that accessible formal property rights. So first, the uh, land should be uh, recognized as a formal property. So people have the access to the uh, property rights and the credible registration system and well-designed mortgage law. In some country, that the mortgage law is very badly uh, designed so that uh, uh, people cannot use the mortgage because the uh, uh, legal design is very bad. Uh, but uh, I have to omit uh, this point uh, due to the time limitation. Okay, this is the... Uh, 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 outline of the Soto's theory. If there is a, 
well-defined property rights, it leads to the economic development. But of course, this uh, sort of theory, is uh, there is a limitation. The sort of theory, economic development through a clear recognition of land property right is based on the abundant empirical research and it's very, it, and it's, it is very attractive. Um, just a moment. So this is a, a book I refer. This is a, a book authored by the uh, uh, De Soto. And uh, this book is, uh, 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 includes uh, many uh, empirical uh, research. For example, De Soto's group uh, established uh, one uh, company in the Philippines and they tried to, uh, how to say, uh, formalize their land according to the Philippines regulation. And they do the same thing in Egypt, Peru, United States, and uh, uh, other countries. And uh, they make the, well, uh, such kind of the uh, uh, diagram. So how many days you have to spend to get the form uh, formalization and where you have to go from the local office, local government office to the central government office. So, and uh, this is a, a, a diagram in the procedure to obtain the sales contract following the five-year lease contract in Haiti. There is a 111 steps and 4,112 days according to the Haiti law to make the uh, formal five-year lease contract in Haiti. So it's almost uh, prohibitively uh, long. Oh, so that uh, this book is uh, full of such uh, empirical research. It's very interesting. So I recommend you to read. So, and however, its applicability may not be universal and subject to some conditions as follows. Uh, first, uh, a modern market economy is sufficiently prevalent in, this, in the society. So otherwise, people don't understand the market value of the land. So if people don't understand for the mortgage, if people don't understand the, the mortgage, maybe people will be taken by the, uh, someone, someone uh, rich, uh, rich people and without understanding that if they borrow the money from these rich people. And it, maybe that uh, the people agree that uh, borrowing the small money that has, uh, in exchange of the, their land, so people just deprived. Uh, deprived, their land was just deprived. And the people must have the access to modern financial system and the land itself must have the value as an economic good. So this means that uh, in rural area or the very uh, remote area, maybe this sort of theory is not applicable. Only if the land located in urban area or the semi-urban area. So maybe sort of uh, argument is uh, convincing. And there must be a safety net for those who have lost their rights to the land. So if there is a, uh, no safety nets, maybe uh, Soto's uh, theory is uh, how to lead to the very tragic uh, events. And a particular type of land use, which not recognized by modern property rights, such as a community land use, or a community forest, or community river, like that. Uh, must be protected or those type of land use can be integrated into the land registration system. For example, in the, in the rural area in Asia, there is a, a community forest. So the community member can use the resources from this forest, but this forest is not, not belong to the anyone else. So this is a community forest. But uh, according to the modern property law, if no one how to say, uh, no one owns this land. This means that uh, uh, owned by state and the state can sell this land to others. But uh, exactly community people utilize this forest for the resources or very often this is a religious, for the religious purpose or ritual purpose. For, for example, for the uh, cemetery, for the tomb, or the, for the, how to say, the, uh, a religious uh, uh, ceremony. So, but uh, 
those uh, pro community property should be recognized, protected, or maybe the government law should protect, recognize this right as a, a part of the uh, property rights, maybe community property like that. And there must be the system that doesn't exclude the vulnerable in society, such as the women and minorities. Very often, that women and minorities are excluded when the new system are designed. They cannot join to the negotiation. So there are many studies on the modernization and the personalization of the land rights that shows the adverse effect, economic effect if it lacks the condition above. I recommend to read the very small uh, paper uh, written by the Benjamin Sen at all. It's a three case studies in African countries about the land form, uh, formalization of land, land, land rights in Africa. Okay, uh, I have to go <laughs> ahead. Uh, political nature of in institutions and access to justice. This is a, a last part. Uh, and uh, I explained the importance of the institutions to reduce the transaction costs and uh, to lead the economic growth. But the institutions are political designs. Most of institutions is a legal institution, law. And as you know, that the legal uh, law is, uh, how to say, uh, enacted by parliament or president or other official body. This is a political uh, organization. So. So this is important that institutions are politically designed. That the institutions are according to the North, according to North, the humanly devised constraints and the rationality of human is limited. An institution is not designed as a perfectly rational in the context of the market economy. Instead, institutions are political products and thus vested interests, both within and outside the existing institutional regimes often derive the substantial benefit from these regimes, hence creating the concentrated sources of resistance to, the, to institutional change. So even though there should be the better institution, but some vested interest protest to the institutional change because they are the political, politically powerful. Uh, Douglas North criticized the Latin American economists who had resisted resisted the free international trade and insisted on the dependency theory. Dependency theory is a famous uh, theory to explain why the third, third country, third world is poor, remain poor, while the uh, develop, developed country getting richer. But uh, he criticized that dependency theory is uh, just an ideology to cover the uh, unproductive uh, institution in Latin America. So, and say that which not only rationalize the structure of the Latin American economics, it's a structure of Latin American economics, it's uh, how to dominate by the economic elite and the political elite, and they protest to change the more, uh, how to say, the effective institution. But, and, but also con uh, contains the policy implications that would reinforce the existence, existing institutional framework, that would uh, reinforce the existing institutional framework. So according to the North, the uh, scholars who in this the dependency theory not only how to say uh, the uh, rationalized the uh, uh, economy uh, dominated by the status quo in Latin American countries, but not, but also, uh, gives a, a theoretical ideology, ideological theory to protect their, uh, uh, how to say, uh, best interest. So North uh, very uh, strictly criticized this one. So we can find uh, a lot of cases of this kind, for example, in the land ownership, uh, land ownership reforms. For example, since in 1960, the World Bank had implemented the programs aiming for the formalization of land rights. The background of those projects had been to facilitate the investment from the abroad. And uh, maybe there is a Cambodian student, the Cambodian student a lot here. The Cambodian Civil Code, which enacted with the Japanese assistance, Japanese uh, cooperation, provides the institutions 
regarding the land property rights with uh, given social situations where the concept of individual land ownership is very weak and there is no functioning registration system in place. Be because of the uh, long uh, uh, armed conflict, when Cambodia uh, tried to uh, develop its economy, the sense of the private ownership in Vietnam is very low, very weak, and there are no functioning land registration system. That's why the uh, civil code uh, com in Cambodia uh, have to adjust the system institution to this given situation. But in contrast, Cambodian land law, uh, that which is enacted with the assistance of ADB and the World Bank and the US consulting company, uh, provides the rigid land registration, which foreign investors can understand easily. So there is a, a gap between the uh, code, civil code in Cambodia and the land, land, land law in Cambodia. So, and the land law Cambodia is uh, designed for the benefit of the foreign investors, because for foreign investors, it's better if there is a clear land uh, registration. But uh, for many Cambodian people, registration is not accessible. And in the remote area, that the two bills, the registration system is too costly for in the, within the short time. And uh, see, as there was a criticism of the World Bank's model land, model land law, the Tanzanian government enacted the village land law to be applied to rural area that covers the most of the country. So they make the different law applied to the rural area. It's different from the modern land law. The village land law respects to the customary rights of the majority agrarian tribes and tribes who embrace the settlement, government settlement policy, such as the Maasai, who live in the uh, savanna. However, the law, this law, land, village land law, potentially violates the traditional land use of the minority hunting tribes. In Tanzania, there is a, a small number, but the, uh, uh, sustainable uh, hunting tribes. They don't, they use a very large area for their hunting. But if the land law uh, fix the land rights, they, uh, they will be excluded from the, their land use for the hunting. So, so there is a political, uh, how to say, uh, structure among, even in the uh, village land law. So the finally that I'd like to uh, mention about access to justice. Since entering 21st century, there has been the growing criti criticism that the poor cannot access the formal institution that international society assisted. The World Bank presents its perspective for the access to justice as follows. The bank focused on working with client countries to improve commercial aspects of justice and support changes to the legal framework in order to improve the business environment. In subsequent years, however, focusing not only on its role in improving the commercial environment, but also on its role in gov uh, governance and anti-corruption, as well as ensuring uh, fairness and the equal equity in society, especially for the poor and the vulnerable. Now, uh, the World Bank, uh, paying more attention to the uh, poor and vulnerable so that they can access to the formal uh, justice system. And the UNDP also admitted that informality and the lack of access to the economic and the business opportunities and to the rule of law and justice, rule of law and justice constrain the poor and the disadvantaged populations to improve their quality of life. While persistent poverty is the result of the public policy failure as well as the market failure, legal disempowerment and the exclusion from the rule of law are important dimensions of the vulnerability. So that UNDP also admitted that the uh, poor people are excluded from the formal institution. That's why that those people remain poor and uh, inaccessible to the justice system. 
while this lecture has discussed the significance of the institution that defines the property rights clearly, it is also true that the state often deprives the citizens of their rights rather than protecting their economic interest. This fact gives a, a different perspective on the property rights. The report of the Commission for the Legal Empowerment of the Poor, CREP, titled The Making Law Work for Everyone is worth mentioning here. UNDP established the CREP, and the De Soto is one of the uh, co chair of the CREP. CREP insisted on the right to legal identity recognized as a person and the right to the voice, right to speak their uh, opinion of all people in order to legally protect the rule of law, property rights, labor rights, and the business rights of the poor. So this is a, a, a figure which explains that. The final, uh, final purpose is that uh, realize the uh, good protection and the good opportunity for the poor. But uh, in order to achieve this uh, purpose, there should be the access to justice and access to asset, land property, and access to decent work. Because in many countries, uh, developing countries, people are excluded from the chance to have the decent work. People uh, work under the uh, minimum wage, even the very small uh, wage, and uh, they, are, they work under the very dangerous condition. Even though the, the state law uh, guarantees the right to the decent work and access to the market. In many developing countries, the small uh, farmer or small business persons, uh, they have to do their business outside of the law. For example, that they, uh, they cannot get the uh, guarantee, business guarantee or business permission from the government. That's why that the government, they are always uh, I have to say the vulnerable against the uh, uh, corrupted police or corrupted uh, government officer try to get the extra money from them. So maybe in order to uh, secure the, their access to the market, there should be the recognized rights. And it, but uh, these rights cannot be achieved automatically. First of all, they, the old people have the right to identity recognized as an individual person before the law, including the identity card and the identity status as a asset holder, workers, and a business person, and the voice to express their opinion, to participate in the decision making. So, oh, sorry. According to CREP institutions, especially property rights, is not only can reduce the transaction costs, but more importantly, can protect the poor from unlawful depri deprivation and can empower them. This is called the light-based approach for development of poverty reduction. There are many books uh, regarding this point. Okay, I, I'd like to close my lecture by uh, showing the, some take-home take message for, from this lecture. First, there is a clear significant correlation between the effective legal institutions, rule of law, and the development, GDP per person. However, the causal relationship should be examined further. Empirical and theoretical studies are necessary. I expect, I expect you do this one, this job. So as a master degree student and other uh, future uh, young scholars, I expect that uh, you try to explore the causal relationship law and development through the theoretical and the empirical research. And the transaction cost theory convincingly explains the causal relationship between the institutions and the economic performance. However, we have to consider what specific policy can derive from this theory. Theory is very abstract, so, but we have to design the specific particular policy this is, it depends on the uh, context in each country. So if you back to the, your country and you work as a government officer or as a, a social activist or as a, a expert, maybe you have to think about the uh, specific concrete policy in accordance with the uh, specific context of your country. And it should be noted that the institution is determined by the political market. Therefore, the former institutions are often not economically optimal ones. 
So you have to uh, consider about the political behavior in institutional design. And the formal property rights are indispensable for further development without expectation, uh, without, uh, without, without exception, developed country have, all developed countries have modernized property rights system and especially land registration system. That's why the formal land rights system and the registration system is indispensable. As, as the mortgage system shows, the land registration system increases the potential of land as a capital. So, but uh, appropriate institutional design is the key to utilizing the property. Maybe there, there should be the student from the law school here. So as an expert of the law, maybe you should think about the mortgage, how the property law should be designed in context of your country. So, and last, we must not ignore the fact that the poor and the vulnerable are often excluded from the institutional building. The approach of access to justice is necessary for inclusive development. Formalization of property rights is essential, not only for market, market economy, but also protecting the people's right against the unjust deprav deprivation by the state or by the powerful uh, people. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to close my pre uh, my lecture, and uh, I I uh, I want to know if you have any question. So when you want, uh, ask any question, please demute your microphone and ask uh, ask me. Are you sure? No question. You can answer any question from me. We have 10 minutes left. It's enough uh, to have the, a few questions. Are you okay? Don't be shy. Okay, so if so, that uh, uh, rather than waiting too much, uh, I'd like to show you, uh, ask the uh, my assignment for you. I already asked you to read. Uh, to read the uh, paper materials regarding the uh, rule of law project done by the World Bank. So I want to ask, but ironically, the World Bank is the largest uh, donor in the law and development projects in the world. But the Article uh, 4, Section 10 of the IBRD, IBRD is the formal name of the World Bank, IBRD article of agreement. It's a kind of the constitution of the World Bank or statute of World Bank provided as follows. The bank and its officers shall not interfere in the political affairs of any member, nor shall they be influenced by their decisions by political character of the members, member or members concerned. Only economic consideration shall be relevant to their decisions and these considerations shall be weighed impartially in order to achieve the purpose stated in Article 1. So this article uh, prohibits the political consideration or polit political behavior of the World Bank when they decide the giving the loan or the giving the support to the member country. But as you notice, the legal reform and uh, registration, making law uh, undoubtedly political process. Why the World Bank can address it, can address to the rule of law reform in developing country? What is the legitimation? I, when answering this question, I don't want to know your own subjective opinion, but you have to refer the relevant uh, materials other than reading materials I already give you. So, 
And if you uh, seriously uh, uh, try to uh, uh, how to try to answer this question, maybe you may uh, how to say it, uh, come across with uh, several very famous uh, uh, author researcher. So I. I expect you how to, in uh, answering this uh, comment papers uh, you study a lot. Okay, okay. Uh, I'd like to close my. This is my presentation. So, if you have any questions, last last three. No, no, that's okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I'd like to close my lecture now. So have a good day. Thank you, bye-bye.